Alright, welcome back to the channel. The holidays are over and the chocolates are nearly done, so I'm going to show you how to turn this into a wet palette. Let's get into it. So the things you'll need, your Frère Rocher box. Ideally it should be empty, so let's uh, quickly take care of that and horse this into me real quick. So what you'll need is some greaseproof paper. Uh, you can pick this up at any shop in the baking aisle. You can also get some equivalents on Amazon or you can pick something similar up in a hobby store, but essentially greaseproof paper. Then you'll need some tissue paper or kitchen paper and then you'll need a sponge. You can pick these up in packs of four in Tesco's, probably any other superstore or grocery store will have them. You can also get them on Amazon. So let's empty out our Frère Rocher container. Get rid of that. And then place our sponge in. Just get it somewhat centered. Doesn't really have to be perfect. And now we have to soak this. So I use just plain tap water with a small amount of dish soap in it. It just stops the wet palette going funky, smelling weird. Other people have their own techniques and approaches for this, like copper coins and whatnot, but I think this works the best and it's easily accessible. So it's a good way to go. Now, when you're creating a wet palette, the important thing is that it should be wet. A lot of people will make them and it'll be damp. There won't be enough water. So it doesn't last the way it should. It doesn't hydrate your paints the way it should. So if one cup of water isn't enough, just come in with a second. Make sure that the water level comes up roughly level with the top of the sponge. Follow that up with some kitchen paper. This just helps to act as another layer to slow down the absorption rate. And it also gives you a neutral impression of your paints because you may end up buying a load of colored sponges that do the job for this. But you want to make sure that you can get an accurate representation of what your paint looks like. Last but not least, our greaseproof paper. Just put that on top, hold it in place. You'll find that whenever you add this on top, it may start to curl or it may start to pick up at the edges. So just hold those down. Wait for it to become somewhat saturated in the water and then you'll be good to go. So I just want to quickly touch on the purpose of a wet palette. So a wet palette is there to hydrate your paints throughout your session. You should not be making a wet palette or using a wet palette with the intention of keeping your paints hydrated and usable for a period of days. The structure of the paint will break down the more water that you add and the more water that comes through the baking paper. So it'll not behave the same way as it does whenever it's fresh on the palette. It's something to keep in mind. It does affect the overall quality of your paint job and will impact the result that you have if you go back to paint that has been on the wet palette for several days. Now I'm going to quickly show you how to load up your palette. It is exactly the same as how you would treat a dry palette. Take some paint, put it on there, and that's pretty much the height of it. Um, you'll find that the paint sort of beads because of the surface tension of the parchment paper so it'll look like it'll split but it's fine to apply it on the model this will not cause you any problems you can thin it down by adding water you can use mediums if you prefer but it'll behave exactly the same as what you're used to this way it just keeps the paint alive for longer so it'll stay wet on the palette for a couple of hours you can use any acrylic based paints for this as well so we're going to take some ink and show you how that behaves So when you add inks onto the wet palette, again, because that surface tension of the parchment paper, it'll tend to beat up into a ball. If you leave this for a prolonged period, it will start to bleed because of that uh, uptake of water from our pool below. But again, just like our acrylic paints, you can spread it out, you can thin it down. You'll see it beads up just due to that surface tension. Uh, but again, it won't have any impact on how it applies to the model. Now you may have heard some people say you can't put a, a metallic pigments onto a wet palette. You can 100% use a wet palette for your metallics. Just keep in mind that you should change the water and change out the baking paper and the tissue paper each time that you use metallics. It's just because you can end up with metallic flakes into your reservoir of water and it can tint or uh, contaminate some of your other paints. But other than that, no issues whatsoever. 
And that's pretty much it. That's all you have to do to make your own wet palette. Right, let's grab our marine and show you how the paint applies off the wet palette. So you can see after it's been on here for a couple of minutes how it's thinned down a wee bit more than whenever we added the water. So I'm just grabbing some from the main reservoir, applying it onto the model and you can see you get that nice thin coat. This means you don't really have to thin down your paints too much once they've been on the wet palette for a while so you don't have to worry about adding additional water or excess water. This helps you preserve the detail on your model and makes painting that much easier. So whenever you're done with your painting session, you want to take a break for a half hour, an hour, go get a coffee, go get some lunch. All you have to do is pop the lid back on and it will keep your paint hydrated and usable for a few hours. One hour later. So here we are back with our Ferrero Rocher palette after an hour. You can see all of our paint is still hydrated, it's still usable. Our Doom Bull Brown, still good consistency, hasn't bled out, hasn't separated. Um, our ink is exactly the same. You will notice that some paints do split whenever they've been left on a wet palette for a longer period of time. Especially metallics, they are very very prone to do it where you get this separation of layers. Where the, the medium almost comes to the top and the flake and the pigment goes to the bottom. Just depends on how heavy the actual pigment is within the paint. All you gotta do, mix it up and it'll be fine. So I just want to reiterate, if after a period of days you've noticed that your paints separate, do not try to reuse them because you'll end up with uh, bits of dried pigment mixed in amongst the paint and it'll just create unwanted texture within your model so it's not a good way to go. I generally change out my palette paper every one to two days. If you leave it for longer it can start to ball up and you get wee fibers, microfibers into your paint. So change your water, change your paper, change your tissue paper every couple of days just to ensure that everything stays clean and stays fresh. This will be the cheapest wet palette you ever own. It'll cost you less than a tenner to go pick up the Ferrero Rocher, the sponge, the tissue paper and the parchment paper. It is cheaper than all the alternatives on the market and none of them come with 24 chocolates. So enjoy this hobby saving hack. Hopefully you find that useful. If you have any comments, questions or suggestions for future videos, please drop them below in the comments. And I stream a couple of days a week on Twitch if you want to come by and hang out. We also have a Discord where you can come along, get involved with the community and share some of your work with us. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you at the next one. Don't forget to like and subscribe.